guys, welcome to Graphic Wraps. Today we're going to get back on the subject of templating a boat, why and how to do it. It's a really good thing to do, especially if you're overseas and you're ordering or wanting me to customize one of my artworks to send the design file over to you for local printing. This, and for me to make the graphics suit your boat perfectly, you know that at your end, you just need to print and put it on your boat. This 10 minutes to do a template will save you so much stress, so much hassle, and it's just a cleaner, better way of doing it. Anyway, let's get into it. The first stage, we're gonna just lay up my piece of paper over the boat. The second one, second stage will be to sort of tension it into sort of position. And then finally, the third stage will be to tension the paper over the hull to the position that we want so we get an accurate cut around the perimeter of the boat. It's really easy guys, don't get intimidated. This is straightforward and really easy to do. And if you guys at the end of the video can't put it into the computer, you can send me the template and I'll put it into the computer. But all of the details on how to do all of that will be in this video. So it could be kind of a long video, but plenty of information on how to do it right. Stick around guys, cheers. So in this case, I'm just gonna use a liner off one of my old graphics. So I keep off cuts. So I keep all of my papers and stuff for recycling. I, I try to use everything a couple of times. Just so there's not there's a lot less waste in a very wasteful industry that is the graphics industry you know and you just try to work a little bit with the materials you have so you're not buying in extra papers adding to your costs and you're using films that would otherwise be thrown in the bin so recycling is good using things more than once is even better so this is how you do you just get a roll of film roll it out on the boat just watch how i do it and this is all you have to do it's not difficult only other things you need is your roll of tape I use this cellophane type tape because it doesn't rip and fall. So if you use masking tape, it's not going to be strong enough. As you're hanging the paper, it will just rip the tape and fall off. So something a little bit stronger along the lines of this. And then just a knife, that's all you need. So that's stage one, just hanging it on the boat. It's not ready for trimming. The next stage sets it up to position the paper on the side of the boat. So here I've pinned it, it's not really, I want it to really hold up there. So what I might do is just take a little scoop out of my wrap, out of my wrap, out of my template. The reason why I want to do that is so I can push this up and have some tension against this because I want to be able to have that nice and tight. Just like that. So that's nice and firm through there. There's a lot of material flopping here. We'll sort that out in a minute. But you also see it happening here as well. So what we want to do is lift it. See, it doesn't want to go down. What we want to do is lift it up until that's... I like to hold it in the middle of the film and pull it there until it's as straight as possible. And I'll tack it off on the top again. That's pretty it, pretty much it. So what I want to do here is cut this down. And now I'm not cutting onto the boat so much, I'm just cutting the paper. And it can be a little bit down from that top edge, that's fine. All right, so you can see that this is nice and flat because I've straightened it up at the back. And up here is all sort of grouped and puckering. You don't want that. What you want to do is, in this case here, it's sort of curving that way. If we lift that up, that'll go away. So what I'm going to do is lift off the front and then I'm going to shape this up and it will swing up because that's what happens when you get to the bow. It'll swing up. And what we're going to do is let that paper swing up. Then we're going to lock it on and trim it to suit the shape of the boat. Quick tip, have some tape ready. And it's at this stage too, if you've got guards or things fouling um, your template and not letting it go to the boat, just roughly trim around those shapes. If you cut into the area of your template that you kind of don't want to cut in, it's fine, you can just tape it up, we'll put a patch over it 
it's not super critical. As long as we get our outside dimensions pretty close, then the wrap is, then the template's fine. So, okay, time to get rid of this. All right, so we've got a, a flared bow here. Now this is what I really wanted to sort of get into. This is a difficult boat to do, but still it's not an easy, it's still not a hard procedure. So lift that up as much as we can. Wow, that really swung up, that's fine. We'll just tape it off at the top. All right, so the bow is going to be difficult because the, this particular bow is going under the boat, under the, it swings around and goes under the front of the boat, and we've got a big flare here. And the paper will not contour to those shapes correctly. That's okay. We don't have to get every shape correct because we're dealing with a wrap film that is going to contour to the shape and stretch as you're putting it on anyway. But we're still going to aim for relative accuracy. And how we're going to do that is as we go along, we just push the paper to the boat and we're going to start trimming and sticking as we go along. So right now, my first move here will be to trim this out. Now again, don't cut, don't push your blade into the boat. All we're doing is trimming the paper off and if you're paper's a little low, like if you've cut a, a scoop out of your paper that's a bit lower than where you want it, that's actually going to benefit you a little bit because you'll use your tape there and then you've got a vertical surface to stick to which will support the paper a lot more than trying to stick to the underside of the gunnel. Cut a hole in there just so I can get the template to stick to the bow because of this flare is making the paper drop. Here we go. That's it. And now because that's all fairly secure, I can trim this bottom line a little bit. So now I've trimmed that, I will just tape over there. And as you can see, that is pretty good. It's a little loose on the side of the boat. However, the boat is doing a lot of different things under there. So that's fine, as long as we really get the tension and the shape of the boat between under the gunnel and the top of the chine. All right, so you're probably looking at this thinking, oh, that's a bit sketchy through there. It's perfectly fine. The, the wrap film will conform and basically all this floppy material is because paper doesn't conform. It's not flexible your wrap film will conform and any extra material in here will be taken up by the concave of the boat. So this extra film, that's fine. It's not adding to the width, which is important. So now we're at this stage, what we want to do is start trimming and taping everything so it's as neat as possible and that we are following under the gunnel and the top of the chine as close as possible. All right, how I'm cutting that, I'm not actually cutting on the boat putting my finger next to the blade on top of the weld and the blade is basically being guided along the boat by my finger which is touching the boat and I run my finger against the weld which is cutting the paper as I go so I'm not scratching the boat. It's just a few techniques you might get. It's fine if you hack it at the edge, just get your masking tape and run it over the edge so you've got a nice clean straight edge. You can see that I have trimmed the paper well and truly much lower than the boat. This is where the masking tape comes in real handy. So I just go up the top of the boat, watch that line. And everywhere I've cut really low. Just run your masking tape over it. And because we know masking tape doesn't hold that well, I'm actually going to run a second one over the bottom edge of this line, just so it holds to the paper more. So when we pull it off, we keep the masking tape 
in shape. Another thing I'm going to do to show you guys um, to dispel any confusion once I lay this on the floor is the right top. Now I'm doing that for a reason. Because a lot of the time, the first time that people see their templates laid flat on the floor, because the bent, the template will actually bow down and not up like it is on the boat, it will cause some confusion where people think your template is the other way around. So this is to indicate that this is in fact the top. All right, it'll make sense in a minute. Here we are, we have the template off the boat and onto the ground now. And you can see that top curve curving down towards the nose. That's actually the top of the boat. If that boat had a more severe curve under the bow, it would be curving down past the base a lot more. All right, so what we're going to do now is lay some measuring tapes up either side. We're gonna square it off at the bottom and then we're gonna protract our measurements so we get all our curves and our widths and our lengths and we can accurately put this shape into the computer and fit our design exactly to it. What I've done here is created a 90 degrees at the bottom here with my plate square. And I'm using this tape that's running along the chine, the bottom side of the boat. That is running as straight as I can with the bottom. Then the next one, what I've got to do with the top is measure it between the two points. So between the chine and between the underside of the gunnel rail and then up the other end, it's got to be the same. So if it's a meter down here, I've got to make it a meter up there, regardless if the tape is a mile away from the template or not. We need to create a rectangle or square edges to measure from. And each, where the bow swings away from that edges, that's where we measure every 100 mil, and then the length away to protract that angle or that curve in our computer software. It'll make sense. I'm gonna move the tape out so it's parallel at 6100, at 6100. We're a little bit off the nose. I'll come down to do six meters and 80, six meters 70. So six meters 70 is spot on. So I'm now gonna draw a rectangle in my computer that is six meters 70 by 950. Because we're 950 between the insides of the tape and that's gonna be our bounding box, our square rectangle bounding box that we're going to protract all, the, all of these lines off to. And that'll give us a perfect shape of our boat. Compared to a lot of boats, this is a very, very, very square boat. As in, there's not a lot of shape to it. So the curves don't swing out too much. And as you can see there, inside of a rectangle, even the back, at the very back corner, is about 125 lower than at the peak of the bow. So if you've got something, if you've just drawn a rectangle and if you've just measured off the side of your boat, and you try to sit something to that and you put something up the back, you're automatically 100 millimeters out already. What we have here is Adobe Illustrator. I've created a second layer, first layer is going to be for our bounding box that's going to stay there. So, and because of Illustrator we're bound to about 5800 wide on the artboard, so we can't draw a 6 metre boat. What we will do is draw it at 10%, which is fine. So we had, in between my measuring tape boundaries, we had 6070 or 70, but we can't put the, so we've got to drop our decimal point, so we're just going to leave that zero off. 6070 and 850 in between now becomes 85. So we, I will be working in 10% values. All right.
stroke width, just so we can see it. I'll pump that up. I usually don't work with a heavy stroke line, but just for the video's purpose. So it's visible, there we go. So what I'd like to do now, I'll copy that, lock that layer, and just leave that layer there. And put that up there, on, in the next layer up, and then I'll change this one's color to pink, or magenta. Then there's gonna be one more layer. So this is profile, so this will be the actual shape of the boat, or our template profile and then the next layer I will create will be workings I'll have that under my profile line so workings is where I'm going to put all my offsets to work out the curves and such it'll all make sense as we move along okay so this is where now we've got our template set up we save this out as green tricks 610 Sure. So it's around about a 2004 model, I think. Okay. Now we get to the tedious part of doing all the work. So the first measurement we're going to take is this measurement. So we've got to work out the closest point there, so that that's where our wrap's going to end. But we've got to carry this angle through to work out on the top rail because our, our location line in the computer is now this rail because we've drawn that bounding box. So the measurement we're going to take is through there and it intersects. So all I'm doing now is using this as a straight edge and not as a measuring tape. I'm just watching that straight line and it intersects to 80. So we're there. And I don't usually scribble on my floor. <laughs> anyway, for demonstration purposes, so on the inside, it lines up at 260. So 260 in, it'll be 260 to the end of the boat. And we're 100 mil down exactly. So up to the top is a hundred millimeters. Um, so what we've got to do now is quite simply draw a box at the end of our template, 260 in, and that'll give us that point, and then do a hundred mil down, and that'll give us exactly this point through that, because that'll intersect. Or will it? It will. Let me show you. All right, guys, so what we have here, so that's the pink line. The magenta line is actually our measuring tapes. So our bounding box is our yellow measuring tapes around our template. So I'm gonna turn off the profile layer for now, that's our pink layer, and I'm gonna be working with the white layer, which is in between the blue that we set which is going to be, remain our bounding box. Then we've got the working layer, which is our white layer, and then our magenta layer on top. It'll all make sense, just stick with it. All right, so what we had here was 260 wide, so we're working 10%, I'll just put in 26, and 100 mil becomes 10. So that has given us our offset off our bounding box. And when I turn the magenta line back on, what we're going to do is pull that node down to that corner. Now that's the same shape as that's on the floor because in that measuring tape it was 260 in at the top of that measuring tape and 100 mil down to the top of our paper template. So that gives us that location. If that makes sense. Okay. What we're going to do next is move along. We're going to measure along and to where the bow starts. And when the bow starts, then we're going to make a hundred millimeter line marks on the template and measure down to each of those. And this will give us our bow curve. What we want to do is start working out this curve. So we've got to pick a point where it's at its highest. So at 4,500, I think we're now. So 4,500. 
that is 4500 and that's from the, that's from the very back of our of our perimeter our bounding box it's not from the back of the boat the corner that we just measured it's from the very very rear of our bounding box so what we want to do here is measure every hundred millimeters it gets a little tedious but this is how to do a very accurate measurement and getting all your curves correctly so from here I'm doing 4600 and from the tape on the bottom I'm also lining up with 4600 for a line 4700 4700 at the bottom if you do 4800 make sure the tape is on 4800 on the bottom tape 49 and so on so every hundred millimeters you're going to do another one of these lines So at the 4500 we've got zero, actually it's zero at the 46, so what we'll do is go from 4600, we'll scrap that one, to 47 you've got about two millimetres, 48, maybe five, here we go, we're starting to get up, so from here we've got about Seven, nine, two, seven, Our first measurement, so we started off from 4600 at zero. So what we do here, width will be a 4600. In my case it's 460 because I'm working at 10%. Now height of that, so 4600 is zero. So that's essentially the start. So right from that point there, now it starts curving down. So that gives me my zero. So what we're going to do now is cut and paste another shape in there. It didn't cut the last one, did it? Z. So start again. Right, so the next one that we went from was 5,100 because it, when, an, when the has increments over the next three or four or only two or three millimeter, I just used the, the 20 millimeter to average that out. That'll make sense when I curve it anyway. All right, so the next one I'm going to do is the 20 millimeter jump and that's at 5,100. So 
So we'll make this 5100. It'll take it to there, and at what height? It will be 20 millimeters, so in this case, two. Copy and paste that on top of itself. Then we'll have the next one at 5200. And the height of that one, we measured at 32, which is 3.2 here. Copy and paste that guy on top again. Next length, 5300. Let me zoom in and show you what's happening. Just also drop my stroke width down so it's a lot finer. Bounding box is locked. Just unlock that. Stroke weight going to. So 53 at 42 millimeters, yep, next one. 5400 millimeters. And there's that 70, so it's seven mil here. So now we're gonna go. Now we're at six meters. And that's 260. And the final one was 300. Because I measured that off camera. All right. So now you're asking, what do I do with that? <laughs> All right, so now what we do, we grab this node. No, actually we haven't put in another node. So you're gonna add a node. So I've just added a node to the magenta line, which is our boat profile. I'm gonna plonk it on our zero. Then I'm going to take this line and take it down to our, our 6070. So a six meter and then we were 6070. So it was 70 mil past that last measurement, which when I measured down at that was 300. So then we can turn this to a curve. And we'll have to turn this node to a curve as well. So what we want to do is drag over our pink lines, our magenta lines until they hit all of those curves. All right. So you can see our original bounding box. This is why I put it there, so we can always refer back and check. And if we think there's a problem, we've always got the original measurements to refer back to. So the only thing we need to do now is this bottom one. Got to do the bottom arc. So it runs really, really straight until 2600. No 2600, that's going to be our zero. And then I'm just going to grab at 3500. Oh, down low enough. At 3500, we've got 45 mil. And then I'm going to do. Let's do every 500 millimeters. So we're four meters, 65, five meters, we'll have 90, 90, and then at 5500. We'll go 5500 
just to round numbers down, we've got 60, that's 5,500, and at 5580, we'll measure in and get that point. All right, so that's the bow. That's where the start of that. All right, so now we can start working on these lower numbers. Hopefully this makes sense what I'm doing here, guys. All right, um, our first measurement from midway was uh, 2,600 out of zero. Just cleaning up my line so you know what's going on. All right, so working on the bottom one. The bottom one was what? 2600 at zero. Right, just want to make sure that the line is at the bottom. All right, so we start there. Our next number we wanted, that we took, was 3,500 at 45. Next one, the measurement we took was four meters at the height of Four meters is 65. Copy and paste on top of that again. Next one is five meters. Five meters at 90. Got everything right. This last little one. Should be 70 millimeters as it is. Cool. So when you as you're working allow as you're working around, just double check your measurements that if you've got a gap, it's for a reason and that you expect the gap and you know what it was. Because I was expecting that to be 70 millimeters, and it was. That means because I've Added the 70 millimeters here for the for that last measurement that I took, which is and then to the tip of the bow was 70 millimeters between there. So if I do the same thing from any reference point back here and measure forward, the last measurement I should take should be 70 mil short of that. That's just this instance. So just cross-reference yourself. If you double check like that, if your measurement's out, it means you've gone wrong somewhere. All right, so this guy, we need to add a node or two. So add a node to stop the back line moving. And then we're gonna add another node so we can add the curve. And I reckon we start the curve from here. So I'm gonna turn that into a curve. So that's not quite right, let's have a look. Oh, I see. I see the problem. Ooh. All right, so 70 up, 60 millimeters. So the node's vertically in the right place. Oops, it doesn't matter. It should be there. Oops. So he got myself out. That's cool. And they run pretty spot on. So now when I turn off all those noisy white lines, that looks pretty much spot on to our paper template. 
So that's the finished shape. The, per the magenta line is our finished flattened profile of our boat. The outside line was the essentially the bounding box, the big rectangle for which the shape of the boat actually fits within. Now we have this, we can actually set it to the typographic we want. And I will use one of our shark, um, our monster shark templates, just to show you why this is so critical. So what we've got here is the, one of my Australian flag versions of my monster sharks, I have various versions of our monster sharks and many different variants. So in this case, you will see the template we've made just over the top. Now to make this shark work very well, what we, what we need to do is make that face fit the perimeter. And how we do that in Photoshop is to distort, oops, I want free transform. What I want is warp. What we want to do is warp this image around until it fits the perimeter of our boundary. So this is the only, if you don't make a template of your boat, you can't do this by flat tape measurement. You just can't do it. Because you're not gonna know where any of those guides are to, you're not gonna know where that curve is. And if you're gonna guess, you're gonna possibly chop his eye or his nose or his gums off. So templating on a lot of graphics is critical, but not on all. All right, so down here, you can see the, the body lines. These slight curves severely affect the graphic. And you wanna keep as much as your graphic inside of your boundary as much as possible. Of course, we need a little bit of bleed. See, I'll pick his jaw up so that fits more inside of there. Need a little bit of bleed on the outside. So we will be trimming off a small amount. There you go. Hang on, stupid computer's thinking. So that is why we need to do fairly accurate profile lines. And we need, so you just can't grab a measurement off the side of a boat with a flat tape. It's, you know, you're going to not know where your, your restraints are. Oops, stuff that up. So this is an example, obviously. It doesn't have to be perfect. All right, guys, hopefully that was helpful and I sincerely hope that I have not provide confusion, um, maybe a little bit of clarity on how I go about creating a template, an accurate template for your boat. Um, not only that, it's, it's, it's kind of critical if you order a print and you want it to fit your side of the boat. That this boat we used today was um, this boat we used today was a fairly simple boat. More difficult shapes are the fiberglass boats because their bow will swing right under the boat and be really tight. So when you make that template and take it off, it will curve down to the front a lot more. It will go past the points of our bounding box so and it will so if you put a tape on the side of a typical fiberglass boat and it might read 800 by the time you lay that template flat on the ground and that bow swings down it's going to add a couple of hundred mil to the overall size printable side height so th this is another reason why I think templates are really critical because you get to understand the geometry of the boat and the behavior of the boat 
and what it's going to do when you try to wrap a rectangle onto it. It's, you know, it's, it's a lot of experience to gain by doing boats over and over again. I've done thousands of the things. When I do my templates now, I don't even measure the 100 mil spacings. I'll probably do every three to 500 mil. And because I know from experience what to expect and I know what the, what the hull is going to do. So my template, when I make templates, I don't do the 100 mil anymore. I just do a broader version of it and all of my templates come out spot on. Sometimes when I get a bit nervous and I've printed them out, are they gonna fit? They just wrap on up and just go, well, look, they fit, fantastic. Um, since, since years ago, I started doing the templates and ever since I did the templates, I haven't had to heat and warp any any of the wraps, you know, you see guys on YouTube and they're still saying, heat it halfway and bend it down. Don't do that. If your design has lines in it, or it's you're gonna start heating and bending it around a certain part of a, a face or straight lines, you, you're gonna warp that image and you're gonna stand back and go, oh, that looks terrible. So heating and warping and pulling your wrap around to suit the boat is not the right way to do it. You, can, you might get away with it eight times out of 10 and then you're gonna cost yourself three grand every time you know you do a big boat or a six meter boat and you stuff your wrap. That's just not gonna be any good for you. I, um, everybody overseas, please have a look at this and if you need any questions answered, shoot me an email and I'll try to help you out where you can. Transferring the wrap into the computer is gonna be your hardest challenge. It's not really all that hard, but again, I come from a, a different background where I do these sorts of things all the time, so it's not that easy, it's not that hard for me. Um, somebody who doesn't do it all the time is gonna have a little bit of difficulty, but I'm here to help. So if you've got any questions, please ask, and I'll help you out where I can. All right, guys, thanks again for watching one of our videos, and if we are helpful, or you dig, out, dig what we do, please like and subscribe and help boost our channel and our business. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Cheers.